The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got today and we got tomorrow, folks. Final two trading days of the year 2022. We're starting things off in positive territory this morning. But guess what, man? We we're starting things off in positive territory yesterday morning as well. Today, we're up 28 points right now. And the S&P is trading at 3835. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 110 points, trading at 10,882. The Dow's up 167, 33,213. We basically touched 33,000 right on the dot a couple times last night. That's the same area that you accelerated last Friday to the lows. And you get the Russell this morning up by 13 points. Bitcoin hanging tough at 16,570. Crude. 77.94 we actually got a 76 handle overnight at about four in the morning for crude we're right now at 77.93 you jump to gold up about three dollars for gold at 18.18 we jumped to notes and bonds pretty flat action right now a little bit of volatility but the 10-year we'll call it up two ticks on the session at 112.08 the 30-year right now down three ticks at 124.26 excuse me you jump over to the dollar index a little bit of dollar weakness coming off last night. You accelerate yesterday to 104.50. We're back to about 104 right now on the dollar index. We jump over to the dollar yen. Jump around some of these currencies. A little bit of a pullback as well from 135 to the 133.10 area for the dollar yen. And we jump over to the volatility index this morning with a 21 handle at 21.88. All right, let's jump around to what we have going on. We'll start it off with the jobs data. So we get jobless claims this morning. A rise of 9,000 applications for unemployment benefits rising by 9,000. Uh, continuing claims, a lot more important in this data from the trend perspective that you'll see. That number is 225,000. Now, 225,000, folks, is a pretty healthy, robust economy. That's just the natural ebb and flow of a healthy economy that is robust with jobs. So, yes, you've risen, okay? But you're sitting pretty comfortably at 225,000. I mean, you, you see the chart here going all the way back to January. We just been chopping around between about 200 and 250. Yeah, back in March, you had numbers in the hundred thousands, as in 100,000 and change for the initial jobless claims. But take a look at continuing. I'm going to blow this chart up. It's an undeniable trend, folks. Continuing claims rising and continuing claims are one week delayed versus initial claims okay so we are getting initial claims for the week ended december 24th i believe yes the week ended december 24th and we're getting continuing claims for the week ended december 17th so this data that we're looking at here is already almost two weeks delayed as in that trend is going to continue and continuing jobless claims is people unemployment who are coming back in the workforce folks uh whether they can't get a job right now uh, whether they're just not getting the pay that they thought they would get to come back in the job force, et cetera. But keep your eye on that. The Fed probably likes that. That is probably what's going to have to happen. Uh, some of the estimates they're talking about are unemployment, right? Unemployment ticking up to whatever it is. Uh, you need unemployment, unfortunately, to tick up, folks, to get control of the inflation that we're facing in this economy. So that is one aspect that I would keep my eye on. Yeah, you could see um, initial claims rise as well. But keep your eye on the continuing claims because that is undeniable trend, okay? And that trend really started from about beginning of September. The Fed, when you look at things, right, when did they start hiking? Back in March or so? Look at how continuing claims were still tanking at that time, right? They start hiking in March. You, you get a nice trough there a couple months later in May. And then the slow, steady incline to higher continuing jobless claims began. And this is part of the lag that you're talking about there, man. Um, and they're still in a hiking cycle. So you're going to see this trend continue, folks. Undeniable that that is going to be the case. Uh, but there it is on the chart for you. All right. What else do we got going on? Let's jump around to see what we have going on. Southwest, they are in the press, as you would expect again may see some relief on Friday as cancellations ebb. Yeah, but barely. Uh, Friday's tally of 39 cancels flights has been consistent for the past day. So they might be able to lock that in. By contrast, 
they canceled 2,356 flights on Thursday, about 58% of the total schedule. Uh, they got a mess, man. And, you know, I was listening to an analyst yesterday talking about they're going to take probably a $750 million hit on earnings on this. Uh, maybe that's the max pain yet, as in you just traded from 37 down to 32. That's a $5 hit on a $3.70 stock. What's that? About 14, 15%, something like that. We put this thing on a daily come right back down to the October lows just that quickly. We're up by a few pennies today with a positive market, but we'll see where they go. But they're in trouble, man, and they're probably going to have to spend some money to catch up technology-wise uh, with the rest of the airline carriers that somehow could get their pilots and their crew around, whereas uh, Southwest could not. All right, we jump to Tesla. Now, you're up by $7 this morning, folks, but Let's put things in context. All you're doing is getting back the losses that we had since Tuesday morning, okay? And this thing's been in a slide of epic proportions since April when Elon announced that he was going to go after Twitter. You can make the case. The the real steep decline in a one-way action really began in September on September 21st when you were trading at 314. We trade down to 112. We've bounced to 119, okay? Putting things in context here, folks. If you're fans of Fibonacci, and I am, if you're looking for a 3A2 bounce, dead cap bounce on Tesla could bring you to 186. That's how steep the decline has been on this stock from 312 to 112. $200 taken off the price. It's like a 60% decline in no time from September 21st. Uh, yeah, so we'll see where we go today. You're up by $7. Makes sense you get some type of a bounce, man. Okay. And even, you know, the bounce we just got on November, you traded from 166 up to 200. 166 up to 200, and then boom, you were at 100 in almost a month. Isn't that remarkable? December 1st, you were trading at $198, and December 27th, you were trading at 108. And what has the S&P done over that time in that month? Let's check it out. Oh, look at this. Where is September 1st? December 1st, excuse me. Uh, so the S&P is at about 4,080. So what have you lost, 5% or something like that in the S&P, and Tesla's lost 50% over that time. Things have changed for Tesla, folks. Doesn't mean they're going out of business, okay? Um, doesn't mean they might not be a profitable company that's going to reap rewards in the future. But the game has changed. They no longer have the brand that they had, and that is very difficult to overcome in any time frame I'm talking about, Okay. As I said in my program yesterday, they used to have this cool aura about them that they were on the forefront of EV, right? You drove a Tesla, it was like, ooh, man, that's a Tesla, that's so cool, right? Not the case anymore, and you can't overstate the dramatic impact it can have when not only just what Elon's up to, okay, but I'm talking about the real hit that Tesla's taken in terms of product quality out there, okay? All I see are videos sometimes getting fed to me about their self-driving vehicles literally killing people driving around on the streets, right? And not to mention that, the quality that they're made with, actually a lot of videos like that, you're paying 70, 80, $90,000 for a car, um, it's not up to the quality, folks, and a lot's getting exposed, and then you got China, dealing with China on top of it. Uh, so be careful on that one, man, because they had multiples that were astronomical in terms of where they were priced into the future growth of basically taking over everything, right? They were going to take over the car sector, but they were going to do more than that. They were going to take over, uh, they were going to change the way we consumed energy. And yeah, that's uh, a tough task ahead, to say the least. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now up 28 points, trading at 38.35. <clears throat> Excuse me, going a little bit big picture from the beginning of the year, folks. Uh, keeping your eye, we got a lot of 618s, right? Where are we rolling over right now? And boy, hindsight is always 2020, but pretty much ballparked right at that 618. You chopped around at that area from November 15th all the way to December 15th, folks. A full month at the price range of about 4,050, oscillating around that area, 4,040. We've rolled over. And uh, already, we're about 200 points below that price level. Now, if you're looking at the pullback we've had so far, I'm going to take the same area here of about 3,600. Okay, I'm not taking the tail. And I'm taking the area of about 4,100. Okay, where are we coming back into, folks? If you're looking for a bounce, this might be an area you get a little bit of a bounce because where do we just come back into? 3,800 is about the 618 of the run-up we had higher, and that's from 3,600 to 4,100. You're pulling back into an area of 3,800. Folks, I'm not looking for a big acceleration higher, but that is an area that we are now back to a 618 of that move higher. And that's a 500, excuse me, that's a 500-point S&P rise, folks, from where we were on October 13th to where we were on December 1st. Talking about about a month and a half up and a month back. See where we go. We could get a little bit of a bounce for the final two days. We're getting a little bit of a bounce now. We got an opening bell in about 10 minutes. Uh, and let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading. How about Apple, man? Now, Apple's up $2 this morning so far, but boy, quite a sell off yesterday. And that is a year and a half low, man, for Apple. And you're talking about getting back into the price range of August of 2020. Okay, so just like that, Apple gives up more than two years. Okay, now, yeah, you had quite the acceleration before them from 53 up to a price level of 140. But boy, you ever, my dad was talking about this on his program yesterday, man. Uh, if you're looking for a big market index pullback, Apple starts acting like this, man. You just traded an Apple from 176 to 126 in the period of about three and a half months. Now, to put that in perspective, folks, that is $50 on a stock that has 16 billion shares outstanding. That is an $800 billion market cap loss for Apple alone. We didn't even have a trillion-dollar company, I think, until 2019, something like that, right? The big race was on. It was Apple. It was Amazon. I think Microsoft was in the mix to be the first trillion-dollar market capitalization publicly traded company. And Apple got there, 
And in the last three and a half months, they have lost $800 billion, $16 billion, man. Every single dollar that Apple trades at is $16 billion. I tell you, if Apple was just trading at $1, it would be a $16 billion company. If it was trading at $10, it would be a $160 billion dollar company. So trading at 126 right now, you're talking about a company that's valued at $2 trillion. But guess what? You were at $2.8 trillion as of 100 days ago. So don't think it can't happen, man. I don't think a lot of people would have put Apple um, at that time because a lot of conversations, if you recall, in August was that they were holding up better than most because they were the new bellwether, right? They were the new um, AT&T. They were the new dividend stock, right? They were not a growth stock. They are the stock that is crucial to the economy. Everybody needs a phone. They have reliable recurring revenue. You can't hide anywhere in this market, folks. Cannot happen. Uh, Apple from 176 to 126, $50 hit for a 16 billion shares outstanding. That is $800 billion in market cap lost. And look at this chart, folks. If this breaks through this area of 103 and you're already into kind of that area, it's a one-way trip to at least 80 bucks. You're talking about the highs, let alone if you make it to the lows. Don't think you can make it to the lows. Some of the best companies out there have made it to the lows. There's the best example out there with Amazon <laughs> pushing 81.82 and the low is 81.30. Same deal, not a lot of people would have thought that. Now you back it up to Amazon. Amazon, in that same similar date of August 15th, you were trading at 146, yeah, you lose 66 bucks just like that on Amazon shares. Pretty remarkable that you were back to the COVID lows. And folks, if that ever happens on Apple, watch out, man, because that would be another $80. And what would that be? I mean, there's only 16 billion shares outstanding. That would be bringing Apple, if it trades down to, I mean, that would be bringing it under a trillion dollar market cap from at three trillion. That would be $2 trillion in in wealth lost just in one equity if it ever gets near there i mean you want to you want to have a doom and gloom scenario for the indices keep your eye on apple man because uh yeah <laughs> i've said this said it said what it is uh microsoft we take a look at microsoft trading at 234 you're going to get you a little bit of a pop today up about a buck 50 um but all these stocks man from august 15th those highs we were up at almost 300 bucks in august and just like that my dad was even talking about right last 10 days or so man you were trading at 262 two weeks ago. And just like that, you give up almost 15% on this equity. Double digit losses over the last two weeks of the year. It's just not stopping, man. Not stopping. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other fang stocks. Google. Boy, they don't where is where is I don't even see. Yeah, I guess there's August 15th. Google going from 122 to 86. Let's take a look at a little longer term time frame. This is why I say, folks, don't think Apple is out of the ballpark. You know, you, you wouldn't have thought so maybe on August 15th when it was holding up so well. But as I said, they just lost $800 billion in market cap over the last three and a half months. Don't think they can't do it again if things get a little dire coming into 2023. Because we got a company like Google that's trading at $86 and pre-COVID you were at 76 right? Right up against that versus Apple, you're trading at 126 and pre-COVID's 80 they got a long way to go to catch up with a lot of these equities. Not saying it'll get there, but that is the scenario for the indices to really trade lower, man. Apple taking a big hit. What else we got? Uh, let's take a look at Netflix, see how they're trading. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a tough one to say the least. Let's take a look at Meta. Meta is going to be up by about a buck today. I mean, these ones are almost pretty tough to, to, to look at technically when it's just a one-way trip to negative prices. you got Meta at 116.36. Let's take a look at some of the banks this morning. J.P. Morgan, we'll put it back to a short-term time frame. Catching a little bit of a bid, 133.06. What do we got with yields happening right now? Pretty calm action. we got the 10-year up three ticks right now. J.P. Morgan up about 50 cents in the open. We got Bank of America going to catch a little bit of a lift at about 33. Let's see how some of the airlines besides Southwest are trading. We got Southwest. Look at that. Can't even catch a bid. Um, we jump to American. Yeah, they had a little bit of a sell off as well on Thursday, but look at how they've basically held their own since then. Delta. Actually going to be a little bit negative as well this morning for Delta shares. All right. What else we got pulled up? Let's jump around. Uh, yeah, a couple stories on, on China. So Italy says COVID cases on China arrivals are Omicron is what the headline is there. You know, I pulled over. I'll see if I can find the article. Um, but this is just a quick glimpse talking about this is on Instagram. And I'll get into their profile and maybe pull up the link for the 
information, but I saw this this morning. 50% of passengers on flights from China have COVID. It's not surprising, folks. This would, this would be like if in you know April or May or June or during one of the biggest outbreaks in the U.S., you just had planes full of people showing up. That's Bloomberg business. Uh, not surprising. So what you're going to see is the reason why I bring it up is you can't just snap your fingers and, and say that they're over it because – Rightfully so, you have many countries saying, hey, man, you know, we're going to be testing everybody coming off your flights because you are living in a different world right now. China is in a different world. Uh, they've contained themselves for three years. They've had a zero COVID policy for three years. And in the span of a month, they've said, we're just going to let it rage. And we're just going to, you know, take our licks, get over the hump. And that's the, that's going to impact things, folks. We're seeing Neo came out this week, right, talking about. Uh, they're not making as many cars as they thought they would because of COVID, right? Does Apple have more potentially bad news in the works? Maybe that's part of the reason why Apple is trading so much lower. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, <clears throat> excuse me. We got markets open. You got the S&P up 26 points, NASDAQ 100 up 104. Uh, all I'll say is I'll remind you a little bit about yesterday, man. There's your 930 bar yesterday. Not indicative of what was come throughout the day, folks. You had 930, you trade up to 3870. And just like that, the day finished at around 3800. And what are we doing, folks? We're trading at about 3834 and just taking a little bit of a Fibonacci in terms of where we're at. Right into the 50%, the 618 of that line is going to match you up right at about 3850 on that chart. Uh, 
What else we got going on? So as I was talking about some of the articles for Bloomberg, that's not the one I wanted. There it is. Uh, so this one is as of yesterday. Okay, the U.S. to require negative COVID tests for travelers from China. Health officials concerned about emergence of new variants. Okay, now that's one aspect of things. And then you have the article that we had just pulled up talking about that Italy says COVID cases on China arrivals are Omicron, so not a new variant, okay? But boy, you got quite an outbreak, and how do, how do the new strains pop up, folks? The new strains pop up from massive outbreaks going on, okay? That is a risk. <laughs> Whatever you think about politics and, and anything, somehow that comes into it, I don't get it. That is a risk. You have um, China with a population of what? 1.3 billion people, and 50% of the people on the planes coming are showing up with COVID. Of course, there's a chance that you're going to get some type of variant coming out of there. Now, there is the article that I pulled up that I was looking at on Instagram that Milan reports 50% of passengers on China flights from have COVID. Uh, Italy plans to start virus tests, virus tests on all Chinese arrivals. Um, and yeah, I would say everybody's going to be monitoring everything coming out of China right now. So when you think of that aspect of things, right, China is crucial to the world economy, folks, okay? And yes, they may be opening back up, but they are going to be dealing with some woes, man, and you'll see in it in a big way. Um, Yeah, even just talking about a variety of things here. High rate of passengers with the virus has put authorities on alert, but in Italy, you got a high vaccination rate of more than 80% of the people are fully inoculated, according to the WHO, and many have also received boosters. Similar story across much of the Western Europe. Unfortunately, not a similar story to the U.S. in terms of how that matches up. But nonetheless, we go forward. Okay, what else we got going on? Let's talk a little bit of Amazon. Uh, yeah. Worst year since 2000, second worst on record, 51% this year, wiping out hundreds of billions of dollars in market cap. Everything in context, man. Of course, I just talked about how Apple's wiped out $800 billion in market cap over the last three and a half months. Um, but it's going to be an interesting year as you go forward for all of these big tech companies, man, because in the long run, folks, they're going to be okay. All right. There's nothing like the company Amazon, in my opinion. There's really not. I mean, if you're doing any holiday shopping, uh, you talk about brand, right? Tesla has taken a huge hit on brand. Amazon is still far and away when it comes to reliability, process of delivering packages. I would say most consumers have the most faith in Amazon that you order something. It's there in two to three days, if not same day. Um, the one thing that they do not have as much anymore is price reliability, as in they might not be the cheapest product out there, man. Excuse me, but you know who are the competitors, right? Walmart, Target, the likes of others. But even I've told stories of Sam's, okay? We're a member of Sam's here, which is Walmart. And they have so many problems, folks, in terms of process. I get boxes showing up. So we got a one-year-old in the house. He's going to be two in almost a month. Uh, so we get diapers, right? We get wipes. We get big items. Those are great to buy from Sam's and save some money. Okay, so think. You got a big box of diapers. You got a big box of wipes, okay? Big, heavy boxes. Uh, and I've told this story in the air before, but it, it really demonstrates how far off even a company like Walmart is from competing with Amazon. And there's a lot more going on in Amazon than just the retail side of things, okay? AWS is probably like 50% of that company or something. I'll pull it up on Thinkorswim in a second. But just to illustrate, so I order, this is going back six, seven months ago or something. I order, one order was wipes, diapers, might have even been two boxes of diapers because you got to buy two sometimes to save money from Sam's, right? Two boxes of wipes, something like that. And then they allow you to buy some grocery items for delivery. What they do is they don't allow you to buy the products that have to be stored in the refrigerator or something like that because they, they're not doing instant delivery. They're just delivering them as normally they would. So one of the things I bought was a couple bags of smart food popcorn, okay? So think of those big bags of smart food popcorn that you would see at Sam's, okay? So I buy a couple bags of smart food popcorn. Who doesn't love smart food popcorn, right? Free plug for the people at smart food popcorn. Send us some some free, send TFNN some free smart food popcorn, please, because we love it. Uh, and what do they do, folks? Sam's puts every item I ordered in one box that looks like the size of a bed, for all intents and purposes, okay? A little bit smaller than that, all right? But I'm not exaggerating, man, because think of the size of the box you need to fit 
Uh, it looked like maybe a refrigerator box, right? Something like that. Maybe a little bit smaller than a refrigerator box, but I'm talking about this huge box. It shows up on my front doorstep. It's got wipes in there. It's got diapers in there. It's got everything in there. It's got a few different paddings in there as well. Number one, I'm saying, who can even pull this in? What if you got a, a, a housewife at home that's just not strong enough to pull in a box that has everything in it that's the size of a refrigerator? So that's one aspect. Amazon would never do that, okay, because they, they're about process, which is so important. But then the worst part of it is they put the bag of popcorn right in there with the wipes, with the diapers, and I'm, I'm taking this tangent for all it's worth, folks, but it matters because it illustrates how far off any company is competing with Amazon. So what happened, folks? Of course, the bag of popcorn popped, right? There's popcorn all over the box. I didn't realize it till I opened the box inside my house. So then what happens? I got smart food popcorn all over my rug. I got one less bag of popcorn than I should have had. I could barely pull the box in. I'm going, what is going on, man? And this is Walmart. This is Walmart that has been spending a lot of money on capital expenditure to keep up with a company like Amazon, and even they are so far off from competing with a company like Amazon. And the other aspect of things, the boxes all look like they've been used for like 10 years. <laughs> They're barely, barely got corners on them anymore, okay? And I'm all about recycling, folks. If Amazon could figure out a way to stop just sending us brand new boxes every time, but guess what? Recycle those boxes, folks, and make sure you do, okay? Because they are so much. That's one aspect of things. I'm happy that Sam's is not, is using old boxes when they can, but not if they're so run down that they break apart, that they don't protect the items inside of them. So for what it's worth, folks, Amazon in the long run, man, you're probably getting a discount right now. Um, and it doesn't mean this stock isn't going to trade lower if the markets get hit in dramatic fashion, okay, as this market takes off a little bit right now. Amazon up about 1.5%. You put this thing on a five-year weekly. I mean, you're back to prices that you were trading at, folks, in March of 2018, okay? Four and a half years of action on Amazon. Yeah, the multiples got a little crazy. That's undeniable now. And yeah, you have to contend with the fact that in the year 2015, the stock was trading at $14, so still well above that price level. But boy, folks, you know, if I was looking for strong positions, um, doesn't mean I'd be getting in it just yet, but you're getting prices, folks. There's nothing wrong with scaling in to an equity over the next three, six, 12 months. You know, don't put it all in right now. Because I think this market's straight down to 3,200, man. It seems too easy at this point um, for it not to. As in, we got a lot left to go, folks, in this market to get over inflation. We got a Fed that's dead set on taming inflation. And we got a market that's sitting basically where we were in March of 2021. Stay tuned, folks. We'll finish up this conversation. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P up 43 points right now. NASDAQ up 174. We got the Dow up 244. And just talking about that 3200 area, folks, in the S&P, I'm going to put this on a five-year weekly real quick. I've been talking about 618s everywhere in this market, folks, okay? And the NASDAQ 100, let's do it this way. NASDAQ 100, what did we already trade down to? We already trade down to the 618. We did that back two and a half months ago. The market was already back to a 618 of the entire move higher. And folks, if you say it can't happen, that is a 10,000 point run from the lows of COVID to 16,767. You're back to a 618 by the beginning of October. S&P, okay, that's all I'm talking about. I'm just talking about doing what the NASDAQ's done. That would bring you down to about 3167. That's also the highs you had from the original acceleration higher that you got to in June. That's also ball, ballpark and kind of where you started the year 2020. Yeah. And that's after accelerating higher for a period of basically, you're talking about, when I talk about the year beginning of the year 2020, okay, there's your price level. All I'm doing is talking about trading back to 3200, folks. And that is after a straight trip higher for 10 years. There is barely a pullback in this market. Now, you could say there was a pullback when you had the taper tantrum towards the end of 2018, okay? And that would be real because you traded from 2,800 to about 2,300, okay? But in the context of this run higher, folks, from 665 up to 3,200, and all we do is trade back to that area. In light of a, a generational pandemic, in light of generational inflation, doesn't seem outlandish just to trade back to where we were completing a 10-year acceleration higher. And even if you cherry pick the highs of 2007 before the 2008 collapse, folks, that's still 100% return over that time. I mean, you run the numbers, man. It's still a decent return over a period of what, 15 years? What's 100% what's divided by 15 years? And that's after none, another, we're choosing highs. We're not cherry picking lows, folks. We're choosing highs. So keep your guard up, man, because it only takes one more acceleration lower to bring us down to that price level. And it seems like that's what the market wants to do right now. And you line up the fundamental factors in this market. Boy, if you heard my interview with our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday, folks, uh, he is a little bearish, this market, to put it lightly. You can always check out everything we do on our YouTube cha channel. Just search TFNN at YouTube. You'll find our channel. Uh, go into the video section. You can check out all the, um, all the interviews and all the programs we put up there as well. All right, what else we got? Let's talk a little bit of cannabis, man. As we got New York, they're going to be rocking with recreational marijuana today for the first time. Uh, jumping around to some of the cannabis stocks, man. You talk about a double top. Boy, these charts, man, are something else. You got Canopy making that first acceleration in late October 2018. You get that same acceleration in the beginning of 2021. And on a monthly basis, folks, we have had, what, one to three green bars since the beginning of last year. That is two years worth of charts on a monthly basis. You got three green bars and realistically folks, those green bars, they're barely green and you got all red. Absolutely remarkable. And guess what folks? It makes sense once you've seen what's happened to the 
cannabis market in general in terms of prices just in the basement, nothing. And it makes sense, folks. You can grow it. This is not even like alcohol, okay? You can't plant a seed in your backyard and grow yourself a nice 12-pack of Heineken. You can plant a seed in your backyard in Massachusetts, okay, where it's legal to grow marijuana recreationally with limits, of course, okay? So it makes sense. But you got the first legal weed dispensary in New York going to open in Greenwich Village today. And what time are they going to be doing business at, folks? What time? Appropriately, the public sale will not begin until 4.20 p.m. Maybe Elon Musk is a fan of that. Uh, yeah, so they're going to go live today. Um, it looks like the first official sale taking place at 11.35 Thursday morning following a press conference. And then the public is going to let in at about 4.20. 20 p.m. Eastern Time today, just in time for New Year's Eve in New York. Uh, and yeah, if you've been reading the articles, this has taken so long in New York that they got like bazookas full of weed just building up. Um, and yeah, you see it happen, folks. I, I talked to people. I had a friend in, in California yesterday. Let me see if I can find I'll, fi I'll find because he was sending pictures they were advertising $12 eighths. And what that means, folks, is an eighth is one eighth of an ounce, okay, which is a, a standard amount that people may purchase with marijuana, one eighth of an ounce. Uh, ordinarily, an eighth of an ounce is costing between, in, in prior times, $30, $40, maybe $50 for some of your top tier cannabis. No, nowadays, folks, you're talking about like 10 or 15 bucks sometimes they're charging for an eighth. Imagine that, right? Um, and let me see if I can find it because it was an interesting one just in terms of visually they're advertising $12 eighths. I'll find it. I'll find the picture. Ah, there it is. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. All right. Look at Here we go. I got it. And this is the picture he was sending to our group yesterday. Uh, and this is in San Diego. Best deals, $12 eighths, fast, free delivery. I bring this up, folks, because yes, cannabis is here to stay. Uh, no, it does not look like these companies are going to make the money that we once thought. This is going to become something that is like a marketing apparatus where it's all about brand. And the companies really haven't done it yet because it's pretty interchangeable in terms of cannabis. When you can grow it in your backyard, a lot of people are looking for THC content. So that is a separator in terms of good versus bad. But <laughs> they're everywhere, man. And $12 eighths. Uh, very difficult to make billions of dollars when it's something that you can, it's a plant, folks, you can grow in your backyard. So keep that for what it is. All right, back to the S&Ps. We're accelerating through the 618. Are we going to get it all back from yesterday, man? We get it all back from yesterday, man. Get ready to sell this market because you're trading from 3874 down to 3800 and the market's just accelerating. We're now above the 618. We're now above basically coming right into we, where we were on the opening bell yesterday. And Expect the markets to be irrational, though, folks. Use stops if you're trading today or tomorrow because there's no telling what will happen today, tomorrow. It's going to be a very light market. And, boy, once you get into tomorrow, man, uh, tomorrow, we're coming up for the long weekend again. It's Friday. The kids are still off of school. It's the last weekend before they go back, probably Tuesday, January 3rd in a lot of instances. Uh, very light market with the ability for it to behave irrationally across the board. So keep that one in mind when you expect rational things. Um, yeah in a big way and you know the one the last thing I'll, I'll talk about with the cannabis because you know you showed yeah wouldn't it be great if you could plant a seed and grow some some uh, nice 12 pack of Heineken or a nice 12 pack of Sam Adams or something in the backyard you can't right so that's a separator um, but you can when it comes to pot and even in Florida right now folks it is a racket to a criminal proportion in terms of how the market is run first of all you have to go to a doctor OK, and you have to get a medicinal prescription for cannabis. OK, they're rubber stamping anybody that walks in there. OK, so all you're really doing is you're getting taxed to be legal <clears throat> to use cannabis. Where that's a problem is, is that for those that have, they can have cannabis. For those that do not have, OK, for the poorest members of the society that can't afford to, Go pay a doctor for your prescription and then go pay the state for your marijuana card. OK, what happens? It's still illegal for you. So it's legal for those that have money. It's illegal for those that don't have money. And what do you do? You can get locked up in a box by the government if you don't have the money. That alone 
is just not correct, to put it lightly. Stay tuned, folks. We'll go over the market when we come back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 44 points right now. Continuing that conversation a little bit for cannabis, if you do want any exposure, one area that you could just add a little bit of exposure to cannabis without going all in to the volatility, to the downside potentially, is Constellation Brands. So they have a decent positioning canopy, okay? CGC, which I pulled up, which is the demise of epic proportions, right? Um, there you go. There's the chart, okay? So that has been a disaster for them. But Constellation, man, you check out that chart, right? quite a consolidation area we've basically been in. Now you chop around to 260, we got lows at around 212. This year you had a low of about 218, held up pretty well this year. Now you've had a little bit of a sell off in the month of December with the market from 260 to 233, but they do have exposure to cannabis, okay? And in good times and in bad times, man, people like their alcohol, okay? And the brands that this company has, folks, they have a small, almost infinitesimal position in retirement for this company. Uh, but if you're not familiar with them, okay, now they got a lot of press in the beginning of the couple of years ago because they have the Corona brand beer, okay? Uh, but they got Modelo, they got Corona, um, they got the Corona Seltzers, which are big in terms of what they have there. They also have, 
Victoria. They got the Fresca mixed. Okay, and this isn't even like a, a promo. It's just that this is one area that you could get into. Then you get into wines. If you're familiar with wines, a bunch of big brands. Kim Crawford, Miomi, uh, Rufino. What do we got here? Robert Mondavi. That's a big one. The Prisoner Wine Company. Uh, Mount Vidir, Schrader, Simi. We'll talk a little bit of wine and cannabis to wrap things up as we come in. Cook Champagne, if you're a little bit of a tight uh, purse, Cook Champagne. May not be the best, but it's affordable. I don't know, maybe that's their marketing. But it, uh, uh, And then you get into spirits. They got spirits as well. So they got beer, they got wine. Uh, it's Vendka Vodka, if you've heard of it. Casa Noble, tequila out there. Uh, they got so many brands, man. So that is one way that you could get into cannabis because, boy, these cannabis stocks, folks, uh, doesn't seem like there's any way to make money. Maybe you buy the picks and the shovels versus buying the actual uh, mining, right? Thanks for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We've got our man Basil Chapman up next. I'll talk to you tomorrow for one more day. Have a great one, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Basil. Basil.